Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Arthritis Life Hack Crash Course. So I'm Cheryl Crow. I founded Arthritis Life and created this presentation. And I'm just checking in to let you know that this is a recording of a webinar that I gave live back in October 2020. So if you hear me like referring to people's questions or comments, that's because it was from a live webinar. And also at the end, I have um, created a little bit of an updated video so that um, everything is relevant to what's currently going on with arthritis life. So anyway, don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. I have all my contact information at the end, or you should have my email if you are accessing this video. So anyway, I'm really excited to get started. Thank you so much and let's go. Okay, let me make sure everyone's in the right place. So you're in the right place if you you yourself maybe have arthritis pain and you have some difficulty with everyday tasks or maybe you feel overwhelmed or you need more support or like too many people, in my opinion, you, you know, are left on your own to figure out how to actually manage your condition on the day to day. Or you maybe have a similar condition, maybe not technically a form of arthritis, but something else of a chronic illness nature. And you just want to learn how to manage it better, or you are a, maybe a healthcare worker who wants to learn how to serve your patients better. So if, you, if those are for you, you're in the right place. If those apply to you. So a quick overview of what you're going to learn today. I'm going to talk about, give a quick introduction to myself, although it sounds like a lot of you have already connected with me on social media, which is amazing. Um, and then I'm going to give you kind of the theory behind life hacks because life hacks are really fun to talk about, but it's kind of like giving a man a fish versus like teaching a man how to fish. So um, I'm going to explain the theory behind them so that you can kind of understand how to make up your own life hacks in your own life. And then we're going to actually go through a day in the life. So what? So what? Why do we care about life hacks when you have arthritis? Um, so they can help you prevent future pain and joint strain, and they can um, reduce the existing pain that you have. Plus, it gives you a sense of control. And I know um, for many of you who have rheumatoid arthritis or similar, you know, one of the hardest things to cope with is the unpredictable nature, right? Sometimes it feels like, why did I do the same thing yesterday and today, but I feel worse today than yesterday. I don't get it. But so there's a lot that you can't control about it, but there are things that you can control, such as how do you approach your everyday tasks. So also, you want to be able to improve your quality of life, I'm assuming. It's kind of a universal human thing. Improve your confidence and, again, your ability to actually do things in your life, whether that's cooking or eating or anything that's important to you. I guess right now I'm thinking about food. Um, but the ultimate goal, you know, so that, so that, so that you can actually live a life that you really love and despite your arthritis. So I think well, I don't, again, I shouldn't go on too many soapboxes, but one of my soapboxes I like to go on is that a lot of times we focus so much on like making the pain go away or maybe trying to find a way to like cure or heal the disease when really there potentially A, might not be a way to cure or heal it for, for everyone. And B, there's a way, there's ways to actually maximize your quality of life and they don't require you to actually get rid of the disease. So that's kind of where I come from in my occupational therapy perspective is really about like, how can we work around this or improve it so that your quality of life is, is better on a practical level. So, okay. A little bit about me. Yeah. I already jumped ahead that I'm an occupational therapist. What even is that? So first of all, yeah, you already let me know, know where you're from. Thank you for that. And yeah, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis when I was 21. So I'm 39 now. So I've had it for, I guess now 18 years. I always say 17 years. Um, I got my master's in occupational therapy seven years ago, and I'm also a teacher at a local occupational therapy assistant program for adults, and I am a mom of a six-year-old, and I founded Arthritis Life, and I'm going to explain a little bit more why I did. But first of all, what is occupational therapy? Because a lot of people confuse it with physical therapy, but we actually have um, pretty different mental approaches to things. So Occupational therapists focus on giving you the tools, the physical and metaphorical tools, so that you can reach your goals. So whether that's a physical tool, in this case, the T-Rex doesn't have any tools, he wants the apple, um, and he can't get it, Where and then, wait a minute, yay, occupational therapy comes in and gives them the tools, the physical tools in this case, to get it. Now, the more, I should have had a third one in here, because what we also do sometimes is we, if we can't change 
the person's maybe internal abilities or we don't have a physical tool to give them, we can also change the environment. So in, in that case, in this example, it would be like giving a big step stool for the dinosaur so that he could get up and get the apple with his existing conditions. So that's what we really, really focus on. It's a very practical field. And we also, the difference between us and physical therapists is that we're tr trained to directly treat mental health conditions and physical therapists are not. So that's really informs my perspective. So really quick again, I'm already behind schedule because I just love talking about this. Um, so what I'm talking about today, the life hacks fits really perfectly into the rheumatoid arthritis roadmap, which is a comprehensive online education support program I developed to help people with arthritis learn how to actually live their life with it. Because I noticed that they were often just like given a 20 minute appointment and then sent on their own. And that's just a really it's a really complicated disease to have to figure out on your own. And as an occupational therapist, I have the tools to teach you how to manage your physical symptoms, your emotional life, stress, coping. That's where the mental health comes in. And then your social life. So managing important relationships, explaining like how can you have a chronic illness when you don't even quote unquote look sick. So and I'll, I also cover the basics of like how to be a patient, how to navigate the system and, and be an advocate and be the CEO of your health team. So today the life hacks are more along the physical lines, but um, I always approach things from what I call the, or what is called a biopsychosocial framework, which means you think about what's going on in the body, that's the bio and the psycho, what's in the mind and the social is what's in the world, what's in that person's environment. Okay, so I'm also going to talk about a lot of specific products. And if you ever want to um, look them up, I, I'll put this link in here, actually. Um, it, they're, uh, oops, Cheryl Faves, there we go. They're on my website. So I do have like an Amazon affiliate account, but literally it's like I've made $2 on it. So it's not like my motivation is not financial. It's more, I have links on my website where you can purchase things and it just makes it more convenient for you. So you can just click a button rather than having to like look everything up. So that's where my, my favorite products are. And I only ever recommend things that I personally use and find helpful. Okay, last thing is that, um, a disclaimer. So medical disclaimer, this is just general education. This is what I'm gonna say is not really a substitute for specific recommendations or treatments but from your doctor or medical team, including your occupational therapist. So I see a few of, more people have joined us. If you don't mind letting me know where you're um, logging in from, that would be awesome because I just like to know who I'm talking to. Okay, we're going to cover very, very briefly the basics behind life hacks for arthritis because we have to understand, okay, first of all, what does arthritis mean? Arthritis simply means joint inflammation. So the joint is that little space between the two bones and inflammation is basically what itis means. Um, hi from Ireland and Toronto. Awesome. Um, so the thing is, it's kind of like you have to know what the root cause is, right? You can have a stomach ache that is maybe from stomach cancer, or you can have a stomach ache from just eating too much for breakfast. And if you don't know what the root cause is, you're not going to be able to figure out what the solution is. So the same with arthritis. Arthritis is not technically a medical condition, just the word arthritis. Arthritis is a symptom that many different conditions um, have as one of their symptoms in the same way that a stomach ache is a symptom of a lot of different things. So over a hundred different diseases can cause arthritis. Um, some of them have arthritis in the name and some of them don't. So the autoimmune forms, which is what I have, rheumatoid and the, or autoinflammatory forms, which are similar, they're things like rheumatoid, ankylosing spondylitis or axial spondylitis, psoriatic, psoriatic arthritis, lupus, many other conditions. Osteoarthritis is the more prevalent one, which is associated with aging, and it's the wear and tear over time arthritis. So it's really important long-term to kind of understand the root cause of your arthritis. But in the terms of the life hacks, some of the same life hacks can apply. So they're not like mutually exclusive, like only if you have RA versus only if you have what a lot of people call OA, which is osteoarthritis. But I just wanted to help you understand that background. Another thing is that, so with osteoarthritis, the symptoms are located like just in the joint, whereas with the autoimmune and inflammatory forms like rheumatoid, the symptoms are across your whole body because it's your immune system attacking different parts of your body, including it happens to attack your joints. So the main other symptoms would be like fatigue, fevers, sweating, poor appetite, weight loss, dry eyes, and all these other 
things I mentioned here. You don't need me to read them to you necessarily. Um, so the theory behind a lot of life hacks is joint protection. And joint protection simply means changing how you approach tasks so that you don't put unnecessary strain on your joints. So just so you know, a little bit of a buy-in here that you know, patients who understand joint protection actually have better functional abilities or ability to just do stuff in your life. And it also can improve your pain levels and again, your sense of self-efficacy or control over your disease. So that's why I like, I like them. They're also just helpful. So just a quick pop quiz, if you don't mind letting me know in the chat box. Off the top of your head, which one do you think is better to protect your thumbs? Holding a baby in this way, where you kind of put your thumbs under their armpits, it's kind of the way that we tend to want to think about holding babies, or this way, where you're stabilizing the baby on your, um, yeah, on your core. Yeah, you guys are, you guys got it. So yeah, number two, and those with arthritis, it's like they say pain is a teacher, right? Pain is a good teacher. So in the sense that like when you feel pain, if you do something a certain way, it like reminds you not to do it that way. So if you have a lot of thumb pain, you would feel it immediately when doing this. However, and as an occupational therapist, again, I see this in the very big picture because it's also like, it's not just a physical act, right? This is my, this is my baby, by the way. <laughs> I use six now. Um, like it's an emotional it's an emotional experience too, right? And you're maybe focused on the bonding with your child at that time. You're not necessarily thinking, I'm going to approach this task in the way that helps my joints the most. Like even me as an occupational therapist, this is a picture. I wasn't trying to demonstrate it. This is just a picture my husband took, you know? So, um, you know, no one's perfect. I'm not going to say I'm teaching you this because I figured it all out and I'm perfect at doing life hacks all the time. No, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're all only human, but definitely over time, you know, even people without, um, an autoimmune disease or a chronic illness or form of arthritis actually are prone to something called mommy thumb, which is um, uh, basically it results from doing this exact position. So, you know, the way that we interact with the world affects our physical body. <laughs> Hopefully that's kind of obvious, but yeah, too much stress on the tiny joints. And, and, you, and so one of the main principles of joint protection for the small joints in your hands is to use the large joint, large muscles and larger joints to stabilize versus the tiny small ones in your hands. So um, in layman's terms, I like to think about it as two main strategies. You can either change how you interact with the objects you already have in your world or change the items that you use so your joints won't be as stressed. So I'm gonna give you explanation or um, examples of that throughout this course. So, uh, oh, no, I'm going to give them to you right now. Haha. -ha. So if you're having a mug with a handle, you can change how you interact with that same mug, right? You can choose to distribute the force across two hands versus one. That way, even though your hands are stabilizing the mug, you're actually distributing the force across two versus one, which means you're having less strain on your tiny little hand joints, um, like less strain per joint versus um you know holding it with one hand and holding it this way um that is not good for multiple reasons one of them is which another another joint protection um, principle for rheumatoid arthritis is that you want to avoid positions that cause what's called ulnar drift that's what, something that if arthritis if rheumatoid arthritis is not controlled with medication or lifestyle factors it it progresses into a deformity in your hands where you end up your knuckles start drifting towards your pinky side. That's the ulnar side. So you want to avoid positions that put that pressure down towards your pinky. Interestingly, and we're going to talk about this with the phone, look at the phone. That's exactly not a good position. So that's why I suggest workarounds for that. Stay tuned for that. Um, you can also just change the item you use. So in the case of opening cans instead of using like a manual can opener you could use an electric one you can use a different knife you could use i don't really have an example of like a different mug although there are some um, that people have come up with because people come up with solutions for everything these days so there are a lot of joint protection principles and those again are like the teaching amanda fish and i cover a lot of them in the rheumatoid arthritis roadmap course but for now i know you guys are here to learn like the life hacks let's go through a day in the life. So the, whoa, a lot of slides. I think I broke the PowerPoint rule. You're supposed to only have seven bullets per slide. So let's talk about our morning routine. So one of the hallmark symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis is 
morning stiffness. So if you just have stiffness without like hot, pink, tender inflammation, heat can be really, really helpful. So a lot of people just figure this out on their own. Um, but you know, you maybe take a hot shower to use a hot pack that can really help loosen up your stiff joints. And, um, cold is going to be better for hot inflamed joints from rheumatoid arthritis. Now for showering, you could use long handle things. I have an example of a long handle um, lotion applicator, but they have them for your hair too. This is good for people who have a shoulder issue. So maybe your shoulder is affected by your arthritis. Um, you can't quite move your shoulder all the way around in the range of motion required, or your hands aren't strong enough um, or otherwise are, it's too painful for you to scrub your hair yourself, you could buy or, or make on your own one of these long-handled hair scrubbers, okay? Mm. We also have, in general, for pumps and bottles, whether it's going to be a shampoo bottle or a lotion, I really recommend pumps for a lot of people who have hand pain versus squeeze bottles, especially if it's in your thumb. See, if I squeeze that, that really hurts the base of my thumb joint versus a pump bottle allows you to actually, believe it or not, you're using the big muscles and joints in like your shoulder and even your back if you pound down on that. So I can totally avoid my thumb. Oops, there we go. <laughs> Trying to make it easier for you guys to see. Um, and another a workaround would be something like simply using bathing wipes. So instead of having to actually go into the shower, you can use wipes. For eye drops, I have a couple gadgets that I've used. Um, and the principle behind these is that it's kind of like a, um, a seesaw, right? When you have like a seesaw and you sit towards the middle of the seesaw, it's, you have to push harder down to get it to go, right? Versus if you sit on the end of the seesaw, then you don't have to push down very hard. In the same way, what this does, it has this little <laughs> um, thing sticking out. That grips onto the bottle, and it makes it so you have a longer, quote-unquote, lever arm. Long story short, you don't have to apply as much force to squeeze the bottle. And that's really important for rheumatoid arthritis for a lot of people because – Rheumatoid arthritis, one of the symptoms can be dry eyes, or it could be a side effect of the medication. So um, those are some of the gadgets that I have used. Oops, next slide. There we go. Also, there are toileting gadgets, believe it or not. So you can, if you're having a hard time reaching behind you, again, it's more for the shoulder, elbow issues, or even just the dexterity and the grip strength for your hands. You can use one of these wiping aids, which this is a store-bought one in the picture, but um, and so then you can just, you don't have to twist quite as far behind you as an actual, um, you know, doing it the typical way. However, you can also make your own. Um, Tiffany Christine, who's an occupational therapist, also on TikTok, she, um, she had a great video where she used just tongs. Now, tongs are going to require a certain degree of hand strength. So keep that in mind. But you just, she just used tongs and put the toilet paper at the end. Um, and then for lotion, again, using the pump bottles versus squeeze, and you can use the long-handled lotion applicator. So you put the lotion on, and then you can just put, um, get it onto your back or whatever part of your body you're having difficulty reaching, which is kind of fun. <laughs> I'm just laughing at my picture. Um, for things like grooming, like doing your hair, um, there's a lot of quick workarounds, like letting your hair air dry so that you're not having to spend as long, right? Um, drying it, that's one of those like change how you approach the task. You might still use the same hair dryer, the same brush, but you're changing your approach to it. Um, you also can change the stuff that you're using by getting a wider grip um, hair brush or even a dryer brush, which is like a two in one. It's a brush and a dryer, which is a lot of people with arthritis have contacted me and told me, oh, I really love my dryer brush. So um, I, I, I don't love it as much, but it might just be that I'm not in the habit yet. So you can also use this for jewelry. You can use this clasp aid. So this is designed for, for anyone because it's a hard thing to get a bracelet on whether you have arthritis or not. Oh, oh sorry. I just saw a, um, a question. Hi, Nina. Yes, there is a link to these products. So, and I'm going to be sending it to you guys all in a follow-up email. But here is the website again, the bit.ly slash Cheryl Faves. It has a links to most of these. If you see any that I forgot, let me know and I will add them. Um, for nail clippers, that's what can be a hard one, right? Because you really have to pinch. So you could purchase like an easy grip one. However, you can also pretty easily, hi, make your own by, um, you literally can take regular nail clippers and super glue them onto just any flat surface, like a 
literally piece of wood or like a plate. And then that way, the bottom part of the clipper stays static. And then you can use a large motor movement on your other hand, like, and press down so you're not having to pinch with your thumb. You're using those larger muscles. So if that doesn't make sense, I can send a picture. I forgot to include a picture of that in here, but it's really cool. Um, okay, getting dressed. A lot of you asked me about this after I did a, a funny video of some of these life hacks. So a sock aid was actually initially designed for people who had a hard time bending from like hip surgery or other hip, hip pain issues. Those of you who have had a hip replacement might already have been introduced to the sock aid, but they can also be really helpful. Yeah. If you're having hip pain just from arthritis, even without a hip replacement surgery or knee pain, um, it does require, so you put the sock on the aid first, and that requires some grip strength to do. So it's not, if, if your only issue is your fingers, then it's not the right thing for you. But if you have, if your issue is bending down and, and bending your knee, then it could potentially help you. Um, a shoehorn, it, it prevents you from having to put your finger in the back of your shoe as you're putting it on. And it's like a long handle thing as well. And then I use a lot of workarounds. Let me know in the, in the chat box if you guys will use workarounds for clothing too. So I just do a lot of like loose clothing, clothing without zippers. It doesn't have difficult fasteners, you know, and slip on shoes like this picture. Um, that can be a huge, a huge thing. Um, oh, did I miss the bra one? Oh, here we go. Sorry, I was gonna say, oh, I, I skipped forward too fast. Um, so a button hook is a classic occupational therapy uh, recommended object that allows it you to put on and take off the buttons. Again, bypassing your tiny little finger joints that might be sore or tender from arthritis, and you just have to hold on to the button aid and then get your, you could help you to put your button on and take it off. So that's really helpful. But the workaround would simply be like choosing clothing items with larger, looser buttons. So one of my favorite rain jackets, for example, living in Seattle, I have to have a lot of rain, <laughs> rain gear. Um, I have, it has huge buttons that are really loose, really easy to put in and out. So um, also for zippers, it's interesting. A lot of zippers come with like what's called a zipper pull already on them. But if, so that, that also allows it to be easier for you to get the zipper up and down because again, it requires a lot of pinch strength to use the zipper in a typical way. So you can tie just a hairband around it. And that way you can use your larger joints instead of your tiny little gripping joints. So let me know if that makes sense or doesn't make sense. Um, and then for bras, I was, I was like, where's the bra part? So bras are hard for a lot of people. Um, like with anything else, you kind of want to experiment in person and figure out if you can get one that clasps easier for you. Um, you also, a lot of people choose like a sports bra style or like a, a shelf tank top. Like I personally, because I'm small chested to be totally honest, I just don't wear a bra a lot of the times. And that's a great workaround for me, but it doesn't work for everyone because it's not comfortable for them if you have a larger chest. So another possibility is securing the clasp before you put it on so that you kind of have it in front of you and it's easier versus having to kind of get into awkward angles to get your bra on. So that's one of the harder things. I'm still waiting for a better solution for that. Um, so for work in technology, so I know a lot of you probably already have heard this, you know, ergonomics, 101 is like 90, 90, 90 angle. But if you haven't heard it, it's okay. Um, no, 90, 90, 90 means you want a 90 degree angle between your core and your legs, like your core and your thighs. So that's one 90 degree angle. And then 90 degree angle between your thigh and your knees, or thigh and your um, shins, sorry. And then the other one is, you know, between your shin and your foot. So that is, and then you want to be looking straight ahead of your computer. You don't want to have to be cranking your neck up or bending it down because that puts a lot of stress on your neck. And you also don't want to crunch your elbows up. That's something I see a lot, especially with children that are placed at like desks that are way too high for them. They end up getting in these really bad postural habits because they're like crunched their, their shoulders up. So you want your shoulders to be relaxed and have that 90 degree angle also with your upper arm to your um, forearm. So your kind of shoulder to elbow angle and then elbow to, so like I said, just, okay, this one isn't really the one of the angles people talk about, but I'm saying that because sometimes I go on my tippy toes. Um, but 
oops, go back. So that's 90, 90, 90. Um, and then for phones, so you want to avoid that, again, ulnar drift or pinky drift position of holding it, holding your phone. So I have a good little mini tripod that I use for my phone. It's, it's handy for doing TikTok videos and other videos too, but that way I can stabilize this on the table and then I could just use a finger to, to scroll around. You also want to get like an ergonomic keyboard because um, again, that same pinky drift issue, a lot of keyboards that are flat, you actually end up having to, you end up um, pushing your pinkies out to the side um, just to maneuver on the keyboard. So you can, the ones that are more ergonomic don't have that, fun, that angle. So that's good. Um, and also you can, of course, use the cute little hand warmers. Oops, I already moved them. Um, the little hand warmers from this picture. Now these are the child size. I got the adult size too. They're in the mail because those are really tight and they're actually not available anymore, but the, the adult size are available and they're, they're not pink, sadly. They're, they're tan and white, but they're really, really cute. They're supposed to look like pieces of toast. <laughs> um, I'm curious if any of you have ever used assistive touch or other, um, uh, assistive technology on your phones. So I use that because scrolling can be hard on your what's called MCP joints, which are, is a fancy name, med, um, metacarpal phalangeal. It's your knuckles, basically. Um, scrolling can be hard on your knuckles, and those are the joints that tend to be affected by rheumatoid arthritis. So if you use assistive touch, it allows you to, to enter in just a touch as a scroll, and it's really, really helpful. I also use speech to text or voice dictation quite a bit, um, so that avoids typing altogether. Um, and the, when I did it on Thursday, some people were saying, oh yeah, I, I use, you know, Dragon Naturally Speaking or other um, technologies as well for, for speech to text. So, um, oh yeah, and Nina's saying she has a cool split curve keyboard and had an ergonomic assessment yesterday and looking towards a one-handed keyboard. Do you recommend a one-handed keyboard? If, yeah, first of all, if you had a personalized assessment for you, I definitely would go with what they said because without, ha without seeing you in person, I can't do like an individualized assessment, but a one-handed keyboard, if you certainly, if you have one hand that is more effective than the other, that can be a great solution. Um, and, you know, just know in the United States, you are, um, basically you have the right to ask for formal accommodations under ADA, which is the Americans with Disabilities Act. So you could have things like um, a later start time if you have a lot of morning stiffness or rest breaks throughout the day to manage your energy due to fatigue. And, um, and you can talk to human resources about that. Oh, good. So Nina found one on her own. The, the ergonomic person didn't know about them. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, my worry with a one, I, I would need to look at it. But yes, yeah, sometimes it, I don't, well, you wouldn't want anything that would make you really have to like move your fingers in, in dramatic angles. <laughs> That's probably not a sentence you ever thought you would hear. Dramatic angles. Um, handwriting was something that a few people asked about. So um, you can get alternate pens or pencils. So that's kind of like that change the stuff strategy, change the stuff that you're using versus change how you interact. So you can get something like a pen again, which is actually really good to protect your thumb and your um, knuckles, keeps them in a nice position. Or you can use foam tubing. So foam tubing is great in general to create wide handles out of any object that you have. So it looks like this, you can put it around your fork or your spoon for your for eating, or you can put around pens or pencil. This is my son's Star Wars pencil. And so that makes it so you don't have to grip as tightly to keep the pencil stabilized. You could grip more loosely and it's more comfortable for arthritis. So that's kind of a nice universal thing. You could put a, a built up handle. We, people call it a built up handle in OT and PT for whatever reason, but you can put it on, um, for you know your eye your eye makeup you know eyeliner pencil you can put around all sorts of things okay do, do, do. people can put them around even like styluses um so for sorry this is keeps having a little delay so for cleaning um things like really simple hacks would be like soaking your dishes first if you have to clean them by hand that way you don't have to scrub as hard right and hopefully like a lot of people end up becoming really good problem solvers over time but at the same time sometimes we just get into simple little habits by default and we don't even realize that we're like hurting our joints by doing those so that's why i'm covering everything just in case you hadn't thought about it 
Um, and getting a scrubber with a handle versus a regular like rectangular sponge is really helpful because when you're using the rectangular sponge, your knuckles tend to get a lot of the brunt of the, of the force versus holding a, um, a handle, a long handle scrubber. So yeah. And speaking of long handles, so there's regular handle ones like that you use for dishes, but then there's super long handle ones that are designed for like bathtubs and um, cleaning like like high up surfaces like the ceiling. Those are super, super handy for arthritis. They help you avoid like awkward bending angles and they allow you to not have to use as much force to get the um, scrubbing action. And then of course, you know, using workarounds is a great way to avoid the task so to help preserve your joints. So you could do things like delegating, or chunking the task out. Um, in the August group of um, the Rheumatoid Arthritis Roadmap Program, one of the attendees had a really great idea. She said, you know, what she does is she has certain days of the week that she does different cleaning tasks before she used to do them all like on the weekend. And so, but then she said that was too much strain on her body. So now it's like, okay, Mondays are floors, Tuesdays are counters, Wednesdays are bathrooms, Thursdays are whatever. I can't even remember what else it is. So, you know, bedrooms or something or, um, you know, vacuuming versus mopping. So distributing the, the tasks throughout the week is a great way to conserve your energy. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to meal prep in the kitchen. This is a lot of people's favorite one to talk about. Again, let me know in the comments any, any of the ones that you've already tried. But the handle knife, which you might have seen in my video, is a great way to protect your thumb. Now, it does, it does require enough strength to grip it, but um, I, I really prefer this one. It also avoids um, that angle of uh, pressure to your knuckle joints, basically. Also, there's rocker knives that go back and forth. Again, they allow you to use those bigger joints versus the tiny joints in your fingers. Using wide grip utensils, again, using this kind of built up handle idea. And of course, you can use these fun opening aids, like a long handle opener, like, oh, I'm just pointed. I'm like, you can't see what I'm pointing to. The long handle opener there, or something like the Robo Twist. And I think for time's sake, I'm not going to show an actual demo. What this is, is it's literally a one touch electronic opener. So you put the can here, like the jar, like it's a jar of, um, you, you have, cat has a robo twist. Yeah. You put like a jar of, you know, um, strawberry jam <laughs> and then you just press the button and it actually goes right around it and twists it off. It isn't universal for like every single possible size, but it definitely helps. So that's really a way to bypass all the pressure on your joints, except for that initial pressing of the button. Um, you can also use any sort of like grippy material like Dyson um, or any rubbery material is really going to be helpful for twisting off. If you do have to twist it yourself, that's what I'm doing in this picture with my handy arthritis foundation, um, a grippy jar gripper. I got that for free at one of their events, by the way, arthritis foundation in the U S is a great source of information for some of this stuff too. I mean, you can also open just a right, use just a regular electronic like can opener. I think a lot of us again, kind of think of these things on our own, but um, you can also just buy pre-cut items. And again, that works for me because I'm not like a gourmet chef. Like I love these pre-cut freeze dried onion, garlic and basil because it's like, oh, I don't have to sit there and like, get each, like it takes away all these steps, right? Of peeling and cutting. But you know, some of you are like, no, it doesn't, you know, you, you might think, okay, that doesn't taste the same. I don't want that. And that's totally valid too. So just, you know, know that these exist. Um, and again, the U S um, in most cities, you have the option of like grocery home delivery or even like ha doing pickup at the grocery store so that they've already done all those steps of like picking the items out, putting them in the cart, taking them out again to get it scanned, putting them back in the bag, taking them out of the bag to the car. That eliminates all those steps, right? And has it just delivered to your door or into your car. Um, in the kitchen, I end up using scissors a lot and I have these really great um, easy action. Oh, I, I, I forgot where I put them because I'm always moving them around and using them. But they're scissors where instead of having two circular openings, you have a flat part on the top and then a circle down here. And I'm very excited about them in this picture. I'm like, what is this? Um, and they're so handy because you, again, it really bypasses that strain on your thumb. And these are actually designed for people to do like fabric projects, like, but um, I use them for everything. 
And in some general principles, again, you want to distribute the force across multiple joints, use two hands rather than one, and whole arm movements, and putting heavier items into lighter containers. So, you know, sometimes that might involve, like, if you get the Costco size or a large size of something, putting it in smaller containers so that you don't have to continuously lift and move something heavy. That's going to help your joints. Fatigue is one of the least appreciated symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know my fatigue was related to my rheumatoid arthritis until I went to occupational therapy school. I had no idea. I thought, oh, I'm just tired, you know, from whatever. And then I was like, oh, it's because it's an autoimmune disease and it's, it's like affecting my whole body, not just my joints. Okay, that makes sense. But um, anyway, so if you didn't know that already, don't feel badly about it. But, um, you know, fatigue can disrupt your ability to, you know, do the things you want to do in your life. This is a picture of me at the American College of Rheumatology Conference last year. You can see my little lanyard there. But, you know, I had to like, just lay down on a random couch at the conference center and take a little rest in the middle of it just to get through the day. So taking rest breaks, pacing yourself is, is great. Even a quick example would be like putting a shower chair in your shower so you can rest even in the middle of a shower. That can be really handy because heat can kind of be, heat is a good thing um, for some people with rheumatoid arthritis, but it can also be a fatigue trigger. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Yes. A ailing, ailing from Ireland. Yes. Yes. I'm definitely emailing you guys all the video. And I realized that like the reminders had gone to some people's spam. So, uh, I don't know how to work around that, but I will try. Yes. I'm definitely sharing the video of this later. So thank you. Um, so, and also you have to get to know like your own fatigue triggers. So for me now, s fatigue is different than sleepiness. It is, so you know, sleepiness gets better if your tiredness gets better when you sleep, but fatigue doesn't necessarily get better when you sleep. That's kind of a, a easy and quick way to differentiate them. However, for me, if I'm already sleepy or I didn't sleep well, it definitely can trigger more fatigue. So making sure I really get enough sleep and I um, avoid exposure, to too much exposure to sunlight and heat. For me, those are my triggers. Other people might be different, but they are documented as triggers for people with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. So um, you might experience them. And then just overexertion, just overdoing it. And I'm sure a lot of us have just been there, right, where you just – you just used up all your quote unquote spoons too quickly. And if you haven't looked at the spoon theory already, that's a great metaphor for fatigue. And so you can also talk to your doctor's medical team about interventions. There's medical interventions for fatigue. I know people who've been given ADHD medicine for their rheumatoid arthritis fatigue because it's a stimulant and it helps with their fatigue. So again, that's a discussion between you and your doctor, but keep it in mind. Um, so I keep having to scroll. Sorry. So for medications and injections, I've already put a few of these out there. You can see I had a bob haircut, um, a small, a shorter haircut, and I haven't gotten it cut since January because of the pandemic. So I'm just going to keep growing my hair out. But um, so the standard grasp when you're using like a syringe is to use your thumb. And that again can be really hurt with um, hurtful for rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. So you can use your palm of your hand like I'm showing here in, in each case when you're filling the syringe and when you're injecting it. So for medication containers, there are some that have like real easy open actions. So like here's an example, you know, it's easy to open and close for some people, for me it is. Um, but I also have, <laughs> this just shows you how things have evolved. I have a six minute long video talking about all these different kinds of containers. That's not even all of them. But what's funny is, you know, now it's like, Everyone, that's like too long of a video. I made that like a year ago and now everyone's like, I want 15 seconds. Show me in 15 seconds. And so that's been my little challenge is figuring out how to make everything 15 seconds for TikTok and Instagram reels. But, um, but yeah, so it's like a good example of like thinking about the objects that you have to use frequently and trying to make them as easy on your joints as possible. And you can actually put the cap upside down on some of your medications, depending on the style of, of the medication that um, container that comes from the pharmacy. So we're going to talk a little bit more, a few more things, and then we're going to wrap up. So special relationships, things like taking care of children. So a great 
aid for getting kids in and out of the car and babies is this thing called the unbuckle me. And you'll notice it's the same principle as the auto drop squeeze. You have a longer lever here and then you have something that pushes down for you here onto the buckle. This was actually designed by an occupational therapist and she got on Shark Tank, the really cool TV show. If you haven't watched it, it's really, it's a great one where people like pitch their different products and the sharks like choose to invest or not. So Charlie wanted to make sure I tell you, this is Charlie, um, he's six years old, he wanted to make sure I tell you that he doesn't need me to use this. He is strong enough to use it, but I was demonstrating it for this class. So um, this again, it's called Unbuckle Me and it's a great little gadget. Um, also when babies are littler, using clothing with zippers instead of snaps. Snaps are potentially really hard on your thumbs. And there's also actually baby proofing and um, baby clothing that uses magnets, which is even easier than zippers. So to keep that in mind, um, in terms of caring for pets, here's my little puppy. He's bigger now, but not much bigger. I, I personally use like a hands-free leash. Um, that's easy for me, easier for me on my hands. However, now some of you might have larger dogs and be like, uh, I'm going to be like pulled over by my dog if I do that. So it doesn't work for everyone. But you can also train your dog, obviously, not to pull on the leash. That's like a good workaround. And then for food, dog food, you know, if you get the larger containers, again, that principle of, you know, distributing the force, you want to empty them into smaller containers. And this is I, not practical for a lot of people, but I wanted to share it because some people have thought it was hilarious and it is useful. My husband built a raised up cat litter container for us and for me, really. I'm like, okay, you could have just, I asked you to do it yourself, but now you're, okay, now. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, thank you for doing this, but it was hilarious. He, it's basically a way for you to get the cat litter without having to bend down as much. And this is actually a Oh, <laughs> a hole in our wall into our laundry room. Just, so I, I don't have to smell the litter and the litter doesn't get everywhere. So pretty cool. Um, another thing about special relationships is like intimacy and romantic relationships. So we have actually, I have an over an hour long um, podcast all about this called Relationships, Intimacy, and Sex with Arthritis. It's number 10 on the Arthritis Life podcast. You can just look that up on any of your favorite podcast players. But we talk a lot about communication and like positioning strategies that can help decrease like the physical strain on your body, but also the social and like emotional aspects, right? Because intimacy is about more than just the physical. And also talking about timing your medications and scheduling ahead of time so that you can be in the best mental place when you when you are intimate so that's something to address and i just wanted to say that you know occupational therapists are trained in helping people with this as well so a lot of people are kind of have a stigma against bringing it up um and if you're not comfortable talking about it that's totally fine but if you were wanting some support in that area you could talk to an occupational therapist about that um, sleep, a lot of us get kind of obsessed with sleep, right? For rheumatoid arthritis or chronic illness, you're like, I just want to sleep. So, you know, positioning yourself in a way where you can have as many, for me, I need a lot of pillows to prop myself up so I'm comfortable. I use a body pillow so that my hips are in alignment and my knees don't like knock against each other. So that's something to consider. And then the habits around, like people call it nowadays, sleep hygiene. So things like keeping your bed for rest and sleep only, moving your electronics away from the bed and then having like a wind down routine using things like meditation apps, maybe calming music can help as well. <laughs> My dog just got over here. That's okay. My son's going to come get him. Um, and then here's another example of like a little, a simple gadget that can help you. So this, it, when, you, when it comes to twisting off like a gas cap, that can be a really difficult thing. I've definitely sat there before and been like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to actually do this? You can make your own larger lever arm by using something like this gas cap tool or just buy it. Um, I haven't actually used it yet, but I ordered it. So this is kind of the exception to the thing earlier I said where I'm only recommending things that I use, but the principle is totally solid, which is again, you're giving yourself that longer lever arm so that you don't have to apply as much force to the object. And then things like, you know, hobbies and gardening, you can use a pad for kneeling comfort and using um, wide handled or long handled tools can be super, super handy. 
Um, so a few miscellaneous things in addition to those two. Um, people liked this demonstration I gave of the key wing, which was actually designed by someone in London. And um, I think he signed up, so I don't know if he's here actually. And um, sorry for the background noise. That's my son trying to get the dog upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Charlie. So um, this, again, gives you that lever, longer lever for the grip of the keys, which can be really, really difficult. And then you can actually get levers that go on twist knobs. I have that in my home, and it's super helpful, too. Then you don't have to grip and twist with your tiny hand joints. You could just um, push down on the lever. And then, again, for knitting, the same principle from the pen. So getting a wide handle or built up. Um, handle for the needle that can be really helpful for hobbies like knitting and occupational therapists we really focus on people's like meaningful activities and hobbies so you might end up you know wanting to get an occupational therapy assessment and treatment for the to help you perform like your meaningful hobbies that's what we're supposed to do i don't know why it doesn't always happen i think sometimes there might be like insurance barriers but um but anyway just just so you know um, another thing that occupational therapists definitely do traditionally do is do hand splints and um, you can you will first of all you could buy your own like off the shelf or over the counter gloves. I don't know if any of you guys already have like compression gloves for comfort, but um, I have a couple different kinds and they work for different days and different needs. So sometimes I just need like a little bit of compression. Sometimes I need compression plus um, support. But what's really interesting about compression, you might be thinking, wait a minute, why would I want something to like squeeze on my joints, like to compress them because the joints are hurting and you would think that would hurt them more. Honestly, I was surprised the first time I tried compression gloves because it was like, I thought, why does this make any sense? I don't get it. But they were actually really comfortable. And I learned that one of the reasons is that pain and pressure are uh, travel on the same nerve pathways. So if you add pressure, it can actually sometimes like um, interfere with the pain sensation. So your brain can't like um, process both of those at once very easily. So sometimes it's like, oh, I'm applying pressure and I don't feel as much pain. It kind of confuses the signal. It's actually a similar theory behind things like TENS units, if you've ever heard of them, like trans electronic, transcutaneous electronic stimulation. So that's an interesting, that's an interesting thing. And you can also, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're left on your own, but you really can get more help again from like an occupational therapist, physical therapist, recreation therapist. They really, really focus on, um, on like your meaningful hobbies and activities and social workers or even counseling and therapists. Oh, driving. That's really, hi, Lydia. Thank you for asking that. So that what's funny is I didn't want to add a lot of driving in here because it's such a safety issue. Like dry, I think driving recommendations should really come from like a health provider who can like assess you and your fit individually with your individual car. Um, but that said in general, I want, I'll let you know that there are things out there like for um, called like steering knobs. So if, for example, some people are born with only one hand and they need a way to um, navigate their or use their steering wheel easier. And so you could get, again, I'm not recommending this. I'm just telling you it's out there, uh, a knob to put on your steering wheel. And that way, let's say you have one hand that has a lot of more pain or deformity than the other, you can use your quote unquote good hand or your stronger hand and give your other hand a break. Same principle as like the one handed typewriter or typewriter. Oh my gosh, I'm showing my age here. <laughs> okay. I, I did use a typewriter on like elementary school, but um, yeah, one handed keyboard. So, um, but again, a lot of these things kind of are like liability issues. Like yeah, I can't like recommend like a certain driving thing because you know, I live in the U.S. We get people get sued for things all the time. So, yeah, but just you could look that up. Of course, any of these kind of comfort measures like a compression um, glove can help you basically feel less pain when driving and then using like external supports. Like I actually have a back thing that I use when I'm driving because it just helps me not get like back and hip pain. So hopefully that helps a little bit. So as a recap, we're actually on time. Wow, I'm excited. I just talked really fast. So um, the main different ways of approaching this are to either um, change the stuff that you use, like getting, oh, so 
sorry, driving knobs are illegal in my state unless you have a physician. Yes, yeah, so exactly. I'm so be careful and look at, you know, get an, I would just get an individual assessment from an occupational therapist or physical therapist and, um, you know, make sure that everything, everything that has to do with driving needs to be kind of above board. But, um, so for joint protection, you can change, you know, how you interact with objects you already have or change what it is that you're using. So adding something to your object or buying like a new one, like in the case of the droppy, like eyedropper. Um, and you can also use workarounds, you know, planning ahead, delegating, simplifying your tasks, like spreading the force out throughout the day. So hopefully that all made sense. And a couple of little, again, I like, I always joke about all my soap boxes, but you know, you might wonder like if you have arthritis, like why, you know, why were you not already taught all of this earlier? Like it just kind of seems like you should be taught right after your diagnosis, right? So interestingly, even just five years ago, the European League Against Rheumatism did a study and showed up about um, patient education. And they found that people just, even in this information era, pe people with arthritis report that they don't understand their disease very well and that they didn't feel they had received enough information, which is definitely what I've seen on social media and just in real life as well. So, you know, I have to ask myself, you know, where is like the orientation manual? So when you start a new job, you usually get like a new employee orientation. You get like a little workbook or a guide or a binder in the old days. And, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, like having a chronic illness is like a job, but why is there no orientation for this job? You know, this is literally what I asked myself when I formed Arthritis Life. So basically skipping back for a second this is why I formed Arthritis Life as a patient education company. Yeah, Nina's saying I had to find everything and figure it out. And that takes time and mental energy that you don't necessarily have as a patient, right? So you can think what most people end up having to do for lack of any choice is figuring it out alone, which is kind of a slow, painful way. It's stressful. It's isolating, confusing, overwhelming. And you know, it costs time and time is money, right? Or you can tell I'm building up to something here. You can learn from like an expert supportive guide person like me, maybe, which is less stressful, more supportive. It's not as confusing, but it does cost time. It does cost money. So I um, went too far. So this is, again, why I formed my program, the Rheumatoid Arthritis Roadmap. And it's really just meant to be like an orientation manual for how arthritis affects your whole life and how you can cope with that. Like step-by-step -step tools, really practical support. So again, that's, that's me and my short hair. But what I see happening is people are like overwhelmed. They have like a million you know, tabs open on their browser just trying to look up like, how do I do this? How do I do that? What, what can I do for pain? What can I do for fatigue? Or you can just have it all like in one handy place. So what is it? I keep talking about this roadmap. It's not like a physical map. It's actually an online course. It has these eight main pillars or units talking about how to do um, manage all aspects of rheumatoid arthritis. And it has over 300 pages of handouts. Or you can, that's the self-study version. It's kind of like do it all at your own pace. Or there's the premium support, which is the self-study plus eight weeks of group support calls where I answer questions and offer support. Here is another kind of colorful way of looking at it. So it starts here. You go get the physical tools, the mental tools, the social tools, and what I call the CEO tools. So like how to organize things, how to track your symptoms, how to change your behavior, because it's not enough to know what to do, right? We all know like diet and exercise is the way to like, you know, maintain your weight, but how, how do you actually do it? How do you change your behavior? That's covered here. And then at the end, hopefully you feel like this. <laughs> a few of you have, I know Melissa, she's like a ringer here because she has already taken it. Um, that is how people feel. So, you know, this is another way of looking at it. We cover the basics. This is an order, you know, rheumatoid arthritis basics, how to become the CEO of your care team, how to manage pain and fatigue, how to manage emotions and coping, and then your social life and relationships. Let's go to testimonials. So the whole idea is going from like lost and overwhelmed to empowered. And that's really what I've seen people say that they experience in the course, you know, living, figuring out how to live a fulfilling life, even with RA. There's Melissa. <laughs> oh, you're still here. I'm like, you already took this and you're just like, thank you for staying on the call. <laughs> um, and, you know, and it is helpful even if you have had rheumatoid arthritis for, for years. So it's not just for newbies, but it is designed for the beginners, but it's really helpful for anyone who, who has this diagnosis. 
So it is for you if you have rheumatoid arthritis or similar, you need help how to manage it, and you want to learn the practical everyday strategies. Not for you if you want a course that is designed to heal or cure your arthritis. That is not my focus, but there, this course can definitely be taken in conjunction with other courses. I have had two people I know for sure that took like um, an Ayurvedic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine one, or another one took like a, um, a nutrition course that was trying to like heal your gut and heal, you know, that's totally, you know, something that is available through like other means. But I just want to be really clear that this is not about healing or curing the condition. It's about managing it through the practical tools. So you're managing pain, managing fatigue, managing stress, and really from that top-down level. Um, and because I don't personally and professionally believe there is a guaranteed way to heal or cure arthritis, but some people do find a lot of relief in like a diet or an alternative medicine way. But for me, it's like that may or may not work. So I want to teach what definitely will work. <laughs> it definitely works to learn coping strategies. It definitely works to have support, right? Because those are just universal things that people need to cope with life in general with chronic illness or not. And it, it definitely helps to do like a life hack. Like it's, these are the guaranteed practical strategies. So, but it's also not for you if you don't want to commit time or energy or money into learning how to manage RA. Um, and, or if you believe that you're going to feel badly no matter what, you know, and that's, that's a mental stage. Some people go through, they get really devastated and that's totally, you know, um, your own, if that's where you are in your journey, that's, that's where you are. But then if you're not open to learning, then it's not really going to help you. So you have to be open to know, to thinking there are ways, there are ways to have a better life with RA. All right. So you might be wondering now, what are my options if I want to participate in this program? So you have two different options. One is the self-study, which is the access to the online course, which includes the 26 step-by-step -step videos that I have created and I present all of them. And also handouts of all the presentation slides, plus a workbook with question prompts and areas for you to write goals and reflections over that's over 300 pages of handouts in the workbook so that is available anytime and that's 197 dollars usd and then the premium support program is something that i offer three times a year it's an intensive eight week program that includes hour long calls once a week where i offer like a continuing support and um, we actually connect to others in a small group and support each other. It's really, really fun. And it's like the highlight of my year at this point. So it also does, of course, include everything in the self-study version. So it's basically you get the self-study online course to go through at your own pace as well. But then you have this additional level of um, support and questions. So I'll answer your questions along the way about the content. And we have an online private support group where people can continue to connect, you know, on their own time during those eight weeks. So that is $397. And if you're interested in either of those, go to bit.ly slash arthritis course, all in lowercase, which is, um, that give that gets you to my website, or you can go to just myarthritislife.net and go to the courses tab, and then you can click to sign up. Um, if I'm not currently offering the premium support, you can still click to get added onto the wait list. So I keep a running wait list so that you don't, you know, that you won't miss out when it comes out again. So you know, if you would like to chat, I know a lot of people have made off questions, which one is the right choice for me. Um, I do offer 20 minute phone calls for just question and answer. Just if you want to get to know me a little bit better, or see if I'm a good fit for your needs. That's um, you could schedule those at bit.ly slash roadmap chat, all lowercase, or just email me if that's easier to schedule a chat at info at myarthritislife.net. And these are all the other places you can find me and connect. So I have a podcast that's bit.ly slash arthritis podcast, all lowercase, or Instagram, arthritis underscore life underscore Cheryl, at Facebook, Arthritis Life Cheryl, or a free Facebook group called Arthritis Life Podcast and Support. TikTok, I'm just at Arthritis Life. Twitter, I'm at Real CC. I'm sorry, these are all different. <laughs> I didn't start them all at once. So, um, website 
myarthritislife.net and then YouTube channel. If you just go to bit.ly slash arthritis with a capital A and then YouTube with a capital Y, then you'll get to my channel. So that's it. I really, really thank you for your um, time and attention. And again, I'm just, I'm here for you. This is my passion project. So I look forward to um, connecting with you further. Please let me know what you thought. If you end up using any of these life hacks or if they work or if they don't work, I always want to know. So thank you again and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.